all of your cells and you stretched it end to end, it goes to the sun and back. 180 million miles of DNA is walking around with you every day. Now you know why it's hard to get up in the morning. <laughs> no way, man. I got to get my DNA out of bed. <laughs> right? Think about it. That's a lot of DNA. DNA is by far the biggest macromolecule inside of cells. OK. Something that we have that's essential, a quality of the nucleic acids that we have that is essential is the fact that they can be copied. They can be copied, and they can be copied, and they can be copied. Every one of us in this room started out life as a fertilized egg. We were at one time, every single one of us here, one cell. That's hard to imagine. One cell. That's what we were. We grew up to have several trillion cells. We have about 10 trillion cells in our body. Okay? Every one of those cells has the same nucleic acid. Why? Because every time the cell divided, the DNA had to be replicated in advance. That's pretty phenomenal. I'll tell you something that'll surprise you. Did you know that you have 10 times more bacterial cells in your body than you have human cells in your body? 10 times more. No wonder we get sick all the time. OK, so the ability to replicate, the ability to duplicate information, OK? It's kind of like cellular piracy, right? Surely nobody in here has ever copied a video or copied an audio that they didn't personally own, right? Right? Nobody's ever done that. So what I'm talking about here is theoretical. All right? But what you're doing is you're simply cloning whatever it was that you had. You had a disk, you've got another disk, you've got a clone of that disk, you've got an exact copy. That's what's happening in duplication of nucleic acid, exact copying. This is a little bit different phenomenon where some RNAs are thought to have been able to replicate themselves, but that's not too important for us at the moment. Something that is important for us is the cell itself, because the cell itself is where all the action is. Yes, we can duplicate these reactions outside the cell, but we sure would like to know what they're doing inside the cell. Because understanding what they're doing inside the cell helps us to understand what cells do and what cells need. If we understand what the cell is doing, okay, then we can treat disease. We can prevent disease. We can make things happen that wouldn't otherwise happen. I can make a green cat. I could do that. It's not hard to make a green cat. No, I wouldn't make a green cat, but I could do it because I know what it takes to make a green cat. There's a thought. Why are we talking about green cats? Cells are the fundamental root of life. We all know this. We've all had biology class. We know that cells and organisms can be categorized into several groups. And here's something I'm going to talk about that you will be responsible for. OK? There's several divisions, several ways of dividing life. We can say plants and animals. Plants and animals are one way of dividing life. Although if you ever go over and look at the um, uh, uh, Newport Aquarium, they sometimes have things over there that look like plants that are actually animals. So sometimes just looking at them makes it hard to determine that. But basically, we have a pretty good idea about what's an animal and what's a plant. A plant is something you kill by, don't, by not watering. An animal is something you kill by not feeding. Right? Or watering, I guess. Either way. So that's a joke. I don't kill animals. And I don't intentionally kill plants, but I'm very terrible at growing them, I have to say. OK. Now, so plants and animals are one way of dividing uh, organisms. OK? Other ways we have a dividing organisms, well, they, they fit nice for that, but what about bacteria? Where do bacteria fit in? Where do little amoebas fit in, the protozoans? Okay. Where does yeast fit in? Yeast is a pretty essential thing for a college student. Without yeast, thou, thou shalt not have beer. Right? Beer is an essential nutrient. 
How many nutrition majors in here? You can vouch for me that beer is an essential nutrient? It is. See, there you go. Okay. Without yeast, we don't have bread. Okay. So the way we're going to divide organisms in this class largely uh, is as follows. There are three major groupings that we'll talk about. One grouping is the prokaryotes, and they will include the bacteria. Okay. The bacteria we will talk about as being essentially the simplest forms. There's another simple form that we won't talk much about. But the bacteria are one. The bacteria are tiny. They do not have organelles. No nucleus. They have no um, um, mitochondria. They have no organelles at, at all. They have DNA floating around inside of them. That's what they have. They have proteins floating around inside them, but they have no organelles. All they have is a membrane. They're tiny, as I said. There's a related group, or not related, but also tiny, also non-organelles called Archaeans. You probably haven't heard about, at least you haven't heard too much about, and you won't hear too much about here either. A-R-C-H-A-E-A-N-S, Archaeans. We don't see them very often. Archaeans live in very, very hostile environments. Some are found way under the earth in very, very difficult to grow environments. And we won't talk about them much here. There's only one or two places where I'll even mention Archaeans. The third group is everybody else. It's what we call the eukaryotes. E-U-K-A-R-Y-O-T-E-S. And you'll notice if I'm spelling it for you, that probably must be important. Probably means I'd like you to learn how to spell it too. Eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are everything else. They include animals. They include plants. They include yeast. Now, animals and plants are multicellular organisms. Yeast is a, is a, is a unicellular organism. They include the protozoans. Now, why do we group all these very, very different types of cells together? The reason we do that is because they all have organelles. This is the only grouping that has organelles. They have a nucleus. They have mitochondria. They have an endoplasmic reticulum. They have Golgi apparatus. You had this in your basic biology classes, I'm sure. This group of organisms contains those things. And what we're going to see is when we look across the diversity of all of these organisms, we're going to see some things that happen in prokaryotes, not eukaryotes. Some things that happen in eukaryotes, and not prokaryotes. And I'll tell you where those happen. But you will find those to be the exception more than the rule. The process by which we break down sugar, we take in glucose, the process by which we break down sugar is exactly the same as the E. coli bacterium living in my gut. Exact same 10 steps, exact same 10 enzymes. There's some universality to this. That's very, very cool. Okay? So what we see is that when we talk about biochemistry, we can actually talk about biochemistry generally for a wide variety of cells. As I said, I'll note the exceptions about where we don't. Otherwise, you may assume we're just talking about it in general in a wide variety of cells. Well, that's good, considering there's a few, probably a few million different species on the face of the earth, how would you like to learn all of biochemistry for each species if each one was different? There's something to be scared about, right? All right, so the reactions that we see are very, very universal. More importantly, what we see is that the genetic code, the way that cells store information is identical in a bacterium as it is in a human being. They use the same code to store that information. So there are some very, very big simplifying things that we see that fortunately keep what is actually a fairly complex subject from being too complex. OK. 10 minutes. Now you'll notice if you, go th if you look through the notes and stuff I've got there, by the way, uh, one of the things students ask me is, well, sometimes you skip over slides. What's the next question? Do we need to know that? OK, somebody was honest. That's good. The answer is that when we look at my class, their information comes at about three levels. 
The highest level of information is what I talk about. If I talk about it in class, it's fair game. Okay? The second level of information is what I give you and say highlights and things like that. Because if I take the time to sit down and write them, those must be important things. Okay? The third is everything else that's there to help supplement your knowledge. I can promise you I am not in any case going to go back and dig up something that I haven't talked about in class and ask you on an exam. There's enough information that I don't need to go do that. My aim is never to trick you. My name, aim is never to find something that, oh boy, I can ask on this one here. You know? okay? My aim is to help you learn. Okay? So hopefully what I'm talking about in class is the most important stuff, and you will learn that material. Okay? So the promise is I'm not going to go back and pull anything out that's obscure that I haven't done. If I skip over a slide, I'm running out of time, and I'm not going to cover that. If I think it's important, I'll tell you it's important. Okay? Reasonable? Okay. All right. Now, um, there's some various organelles. Your book is unusual in calling these guys organelles. We'll talk later about why that's not really an organelle. Okay. But everything else there is an organelle. If you're a botany, how many botany plant pathology students in here? One, two, three. Okay, about four. Okay, four or five. A few. Uh, we'll talk about um, photosynthesis later in the term. And uh, wherever I can, I will try to, to differentiate and distinguish plants uh, from other things. Although, as we'll see, plants do many things uh, in common with other cells uh, as well. But we see these organelles. We see every eukaryotic cell has a nucleus. Every eukaryotic cell has a membrane. Every eukaryotic cell has a mitochondrion. Endoplasmic reticulum, which is important in uh, targeting proteins for where they're ultimately going to end up. We'll see what, how that happens uh, later. Ribosomes, as I said, not really an organelle. They're more of a structure. Organelles have membranes around them. Ribosomes don't have membranes around them, so they're not really um, a, um, an organelle. We see that prokaryotes don't have any of these guys. They have ribosomes. Well, that doesn't count as an organelle. And they have a membrane, only because if you didn't have a membrane, you wouldn't have a cell. So I wouldn't call a membrane an organelle either. All right. Let's see. I told you about the Archaeans. I'm just going to show you this. Not that I'm trying to get you something that you've got to memorize because I don't care about you memorizing it. But Archaeans grow up in the most bizarre of environments. They can grow in a place where the pH might be 1. And, it's full, and the, the place where they're growing is full of salt. Places where no other cell on the face of the earth would grow, Archaeans seem to manage to grow. They're very, very interesting organisms. This is a... Um, a sulfur pit in, I believe it's in Yellowstone, if I'm not mistaken, where they have isolated organisms that are growing in this muck that's in here. You can dig way down into this, the, beneath the surface of the earth and find Archaeans growing down there. Okay? They love hostile environments. Okay, you've had basic biology. You see eukaryotic cells. You know, of course, that they've got a nucleus. You know that they've got Golgi. You know that they've got endoplasmic reticulum. And you know they've got mitochondria. If I say mitochondria, what's the function of the mitochondria? Power plant, right? What's the function of the chloroplast? Everybody knows what that is? Okay, it's making its photosynthesis, right? So some of these you already know something about. We'll talk a little bit about the others as we get going uh, along. And let's see. There's some cool structures uh, there of Golgi actually budding off. Cytoskeleton, probably something you never really thought about and something we won't even talk about in here, really. But cytoskeleton is, to the cell, what your skeleton is to you. Cytoskeleton gives the cell structure, internal structural components that give the cell the structure that it has. Okay? Um, let's see. Let's scroll on down. Energy. Now, the last thing I'll talk about today, I've got about five minutes, is energy. And energy we're going to see is absolutely essential for us to be considering. We're not going to go do a lot of calculations. We will do a, a few later in the term, very few, I promise. Okay. Uh, but we have to understand energy and why energy is important. What we will discover as we get going along is that cells are in a constant battle with the universe 